It's Nolan. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I could blow a stack, but I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I could blow a stack, but I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. My studio says she's turning to fireworks. These reptiles on me like a Lakasha. Plain Jane, make your eyes hurt. Fuck a sponsor. My mission to give it your prize, but without the concert. Pandemic showed me I could get it off the muscle. I'll be grinding year round. Y'all be waiting for the summer. I just fill the gaps. Don't need a light for the tunnel. Y'all looking highly disgruntled. I use the mic for my hustle. Boy, I came up. Triple beam changed up. Built the team, serving up the fiends through the screen. Uh, living out the dream. Uh, still independent. Don't need the red tape. Game green. Cut the Dead weight, that's my headspace. Yeah, I've been a boss, I just now embraced it. Feeling in W9s like an application. Strong mind, habitations, planning vacations. I put my dogs in the business like I'm Baron Davis. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I could blow a stack, but I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I could blow a stack, but I make it back. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid J. Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. As y'all can see here, we've got a little nice little show planned out for y'all. I thought I was done talking about Baby Storm and Ice Spice, but apparently new information has come out. And apparently Ice Spice, the alleged Ice Spice, we'll say, has been talking a little bit greasy about Miss Barbie herself. So we're going to get into that. We're going to get into uh, Keisha Cole's situation. You know, she recently came out public with her new boyfriend, rapper Huncho. Uh, Lil Scrappy and some other guys went on the Bag Fuel podcast recently talking about that situation. They thought that it was a fake relationship for for uh, viral clicks. I don't know. Just never know. Things may not be what they seem. We're also going to get into SZA coming out and complaining about being identified as an R&B artist. She wants to clarify that she wants to be notified and known as a pop artist on a grander scale rather than just R&B. I don't really think it too much matters what genre you put her in. She's a big star. So, you know, but based on her own assessment, she feels that she shouldn't be boxed in to the R&B genre. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to pull up uh, Megan Thee Stallion's. Um, I guess promotion for the upcoming album, whatever it is, a project called Boa of some sort, whether that be an album, she, she launched it like it was a video game, but I don't, I don't know, maybe in tandem with the project. So we're going to talk about that as well. Um, and from there, we'll get into some other things, you know what I mean? If we do. So first things first, let's get into Ice Spice and Baby Storm. Because Baby Storm came out and leaked a conversation about Nicki Minaj that they were having, excuse me, that they were having. And, you know, I kind of wrote Baby Storm off as a as an industry hater, as a flunky, you know what I'm saying? As a motherfucker that got by taking tests by using everybody else's answers and wanted to come back and shit on everyone else. Baby Storm might actually have a few things to say that I might believe. So let's get into this saga. All right. So we're taking a quick little gander here over at Baby Storm's Twitter page. She says, good morning, Barbs. As promised, this is how Isis really feels about your evil queen at Nicki Minaj. Ungrateful and delusional. Just like y'all. <laughs> Shit. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, no. Let's get into the mess. Well, let's get into the mess, man. She started. I, what I will say, 
You could tell Baby Storm is a theater kid because she bring the drama to your mama and everyone else with the llama when she come outside. I got to appreciate at least that about her. Whether this shit is real or not, I don't know. But let's get into it, y'all. Y'all know she likes to expose text messages between herself and Ice, Ice Spice on her second phone. So here's where things start to get a little bit interesting, right? As you can see, Baby Storm is in blue. Ice Spice is in the uh, the clear white with gray background. So she asks, she says, how the call in yesterday on a good note? And this is a conversation about the negotiation for Ice Spice to join Nicki Minaj's Heavy On It label. Allegedly, this is what I'm going to keep saying because we don't have hard proof that this stuff is legit. Ice Spice hasn't come out to address it. I don't think Nicki has even come out to address this shit. But she's letting her side of the uh, story come out. These text messages are from a year ago. So let's get into it. How'd the conversation go? She says open ended again. But then James called me with Nikki's old manager of 11 years. And he said she was being unfair asking for too much. Now, James is Ice Spice's manager, James Roseman Jr. I told y'all about him. He's Jimmy Henchman's son. Jimmy Henchman is an OG gangster slash music business executive. He's responsible for signing game um, and some other people in the music industry as well. He was also um, one of the people in cahoots with having Tupac shot at Quad Studios in New York. So Biggie, who shot ya, all that shit, East Coast, West Coast was kind of fueled by Jimmy Henchman's involvement in those times. All right. But this is his son that manages Ice Spice today. So they have a conversation. They're trying to negotiate the deal, allegedly. And Ice Spice says her manager called and said uh, that he had Nikki's old manager of 11 years on the phone. Now, I believe this manager to be G. Roberson, who we heard Nicki Minaj very explicitly talk about on Station Head just a couple of weeks ago, talking about how an artist wanted to sign with her, got cold feet, went and signed with the white people, all this different stuff. I don't know if everything she said on that show is pertaining to Ice Spice, but at least we know a few things are being cross-referenced. And it's like, hmm, some of this stuff is adding up, right? So Nikki's old manager of 11 years said she was being unfair and asking for too much. So he came in and issued a warning saying, I don't think you should do it. She's asking for too much on her end. This is not going to be. Mutually beneficial for the both of y'all, I would say back out, right? She continues, which is what everyone's been telling me, but it's hard to negotiate with her because she doesn't let people talk like lawyers or James, etc. So everyone around Ice Spice has been telling her this not going to be as good of a look as you think it is. I know you fuck with Nikki. You grew up bumping her music. You want to be associated with her. Y'all got some shit popping. But on a business level, this is not going to go the way that you would think, hope or want it to go. We're just giving you heads up. And she's getting a lot more leeway than a lot of artists do in this industry. So she should be thankful that these folks are letting her know. Baby Storm then comes back and says, just woke up. That's just so annoying, bro. Does she just not realize that she's asking for too much? I says, no, she doesn't think so at all. Right. Baby Storm, so frustrating. Do you think you guys will be able to come to a compromise? Ice Spice says, hopefully. But we're about to put out another record in June for the Barbie soundtrack, which is an opportunity I brought her. <laughs> now, that's some real shit. Now, y'all know. The whole the whole way that this was portrayed was that Barbie was coming, Mattel was coming to Nikki, you know what I'm saying, coming to show her love, do all this good shit, all these years she's been promoting Barbie that's been a part of her brand, all this stuff, they coming back to spin the block. But Ice Spice says, I brought that opportunity 
to her. So she ain't doing me no motherfucking favors trying to sign me. Shit, I'm the one with the big movie opportunity. This is going to be a huge sink opportunity. We're going to get some bread. Fuck going on. You know what I'm saying? You thought they was filling you? <laughs> they brought me the munch. You feel me? <laughs> oh, no. I bet. So this is how things start. She says she brought the chicken to the plate. Right? Baby Storm comes back. Now she's scrolling through. She says, oh, wait, there's more. You're welcome, Barbs. Hope everyone has a good day. So now, what do we have here? Right? Which is an opportunity I brought her. She expands. Because Barbie asked me to do it alone. Mm. They wanted Ice Spice to do Barbie, Barbie Girl, Barbie World alone. Now, how would that have looked if she did it solo, dolo, yolo? <laughs> Ooh, shit. Right? Barbie asked me to do it alone, but since that's her brand, I invited her on. And she doesn't even see that as me bringing her something. So she's saying Nikki didn't even feel like this was valid. This ain't nothing special. Right? Then, eh, nah, you still owe me. I'm the one that needs to get the lion's share of everything. I need to own shit. I need to own your shit. All this type stuff, right? That's wild. We bring I'm, I, I got the balls in my court. I'm bringing you some chicken. And you trying to take from me because you got the upper hand. You got all these years in the industry. So you're like, that ain't really nothing. What I can do for you supersedes all this. Ice continues. She's kind of like my mom. Ungrateful and delusional. Woo. Shots fired. Furthermore, she states, I cut her off, by the way. Not speaking to her till January. Now, I don't know in this moment if she's referring to Nicki Minaj that she's cut off. Or if she's cut off her mother. Either way. She she sick of everybody's shit. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers can't have access to me. Fuck that. I'm the one in position. I don't even like Ice Spice music. But she out here being on some G shit behind the scenes. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> oh, man. What else you got for us, Storm? So she comes through and says, OMG, how does she not realize that? It's not like they initially asked her to do it. That's the thing people always say about her. She'll always think she's doing you a favor. So Baby Storm is jumping in. And this is what I find, you know, interesting because I like to see what people say in return. Don't just leak my text. Don't just leak what I said. What did you say? How, how was you co-signing the shit that I was on if I was on bullshit? Right? She comes back with a uh, frowny face, says, did she do more or do you just feel like that's what's best? I Spice allegedly comes back and says, no, it's that. Plus, she wants publishing from all my songs, including third party writing competitions. That's fucked up. Right. This girl already has a record deal, by the way. Let's keep that all the way real at this at this current juncture, Ice Spice already has a deal in place while having these negotiations with Nikki. She shouldn't have been signing a motherfucking thing anyway. Because don't nobody want to sign to one nigga that's signed to another nigga who's signed by that nigga. We talking about that with this whole Drake, Kendrick Lamar thing. She's already signed the 10K project slash capital. What are you going to add to my deal? What are you going to add to my situation besides putting me in a deeper deficit? That's going to be worth you taking my publishing. We didn't even, we negotiated to keep my publishing with 10K and Capital. That was very much something that they uh, promoted with their billboard interview. They made it very much known that they weren't giving up masters or publishing, as a matter of fact. And she got them shits. 
So, um, and she's saying she not only wanted Ice Spice's publishing on her songs, but also any third party writing. So anything I write for other people or any songs that I get on as features, Nikki wants to eat off anything I touch musically. I don't even think Nicki Minaj to this day would accept no deal like that from nobody. But we're going to get to that. Ice continues and says, mind you, I had a Taylor Swift collab before I even had the Nicki one. Now, this is interesting, very interesting to me because I did not know that this was how the uh, the run of events actually played out. I thought that the Ice Spice collab I mean, excuse me, I thought the Taylor Swift collab came much later in the game, right? We were all surprised when they had that collaboration together. It seemed a little left field, but apparently behind the scenes, it was already done well in advance, even before Nikki attempted to sign her. So this is really off of the just buzz of um, Munch, that other song she had out there where she was talking about um, the Pink Panther shit collab that was out there uh what else was out that song where she was rapping about the nigga the sad song that she had um and possibly princess diana but she already had taylor in pocket so it's like what i already got i'm already being co-signed by the biggest Artist in the industry, a motherfucker that could drop an album and go platinum in two days overnight type shit. What I'm what I need to do with you? Mm. Didn't know it got that deep. We're gonna let it scroll up a little bit. I don't know why she had to do it on the phone, but you know, as far as the video thing, but whatever. Screen recording. Says, is the Taylor collab coming out? And yes, I know. I mean, did, hold on. Did your mom do more annoying shit or did you just feel like a break was necessary? Okay, so that was in reference to Ice's mom. Also, bro, now that I'm thinking about it, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I think we're forgetting that when Nikki was coming up, the deals people were getting at that time, early 2000s, weren't artist friendly at all. Literally not until recently. So to us, she's asking for too much. But because she's probably used to seeing labels take more, she feels like it's more than fair, which is a very valid excuse. But at the same time, it's not because artists were actually getting kind of favorable deals when Nicki Minaj was coming in. Maybe maybe not in the earlier days of her trying to get signed, but we saw plenty of artists in the 2000. 7 2008 2009 era actually get favorable deals where they were able to launch labels they were able to retain their publishing they were able to become partners that was uh definitely the uh the label imprint era where we saw people like lupe get first and 15 we saw wayne drop young money um rick ross i think started Maybach music a few years later but all these people were starting to get these partnerships, these JV deals. Atlantic was giving the motherfuckers out. T.I. had Grand Hustle. Um, so there was definitely an advent of like artist friendly deals. The budgets were bigger. The promotions were bigger. Everything was just kind of flowing cash flow wise in the industry. So although the advances might not have been as big, there was still much more money on the table for you to get or have access to at a later time, right? So I get what they're saying and I can understand how Nikki might try to use that as a manipulation tactic saying, well, what I've seen, motherfuckers ain't getting, you didn't used to get all this, all this artist-friendly stuff y'all talking about these days, we never had access to it. Just, just uh, manipulation tactics, Baby Storm continues, it's not right, but she's much older, which is why she feels that way. Not right at all, though. Ice Spice says, and that's basically what she's saying, because she keeps saying, oh, when Wayne was signing me, I didn't question, blah, blah. I bet she didn't question because she wanted to be with Young Money and Wayne so fucking bad. She wanted to be with them niggas so bad. She damn near snaked Fendi 
Some people say she did. Right? Ran up under them. They still didn't know what to do with her. Still wouldn't put her on paperwork. Deb comes in, swoops Nikki, say, baby, come down to Atlanta. Come fuck with us. Come get with Gucci Waka and the team, French Montana. We're going to put you in the strip club. We're going to put you in the hood clubs. Get your shit rocking and popping. Snake their way out of fucking Deb's grasp. Young Money finally wanted to play ball after she built her buzz with Deb and them going through the Southern Chitlin circuit. Cut her out completely. Right? So, I find it very interesting to say she didn't ask no questions when Wayne was signing her because she wanted so badly to be up under Wayne, she was willing to stomp out anyone else that was willing to help so she could get in that crew. Right? And you barbs, y'all going to have to y'all going to have to just take that shit, man. This this part of the story is well documented. I'm not saying nothing that y'all niggas don't know. I'm not here to shit on old girl, but the shit be stinking when you look at the the history. And when she come out with that documentary, she hanging out with Deb and shit now. That part of the story needs to be included. All right. I says, but me and her are in different places in our career when that happened. That's a motherfucking fact. I spice at this current juncture where she's talking has about three hit records. Not no mixtape shit. Not no mix show radio shit. Not no performing at the motherfucking local uh club she was going she was doing festival dates we was out here saying she couldn't perform a motherfucking lick but at least she was on the on the bill i don't like her music at all i'm be honest so i'm not shooting her no bail but she's putting numbers up putting numbers on the board i can't i can't take that away from her right she says like i'm already signed so why would i work backwards Fact the mundo. She says, and nah, it's just necessary. Like she gaslights me too much. I got to love her from a distance from my mental health. And I believe, again, that's talking about her mom. But she says that Nikki is just like her mom. So, do do What else we got? I'm going to let this bullshit scroll, man. God dang. So Baby Storm says, this is the best way I can describe it. Nikki is like those people who believe that kids today shouldn't get student loan forgiveness because they had to pay for it back when they went. Mm. It's a very good analogy, Baby Storm. You got a, you got a better you got a better head on your shoulders than I thought you did. Right? Ice Spice says, but mind you, we wanted to pay Nikki. Ooh, shit. <laughs> now... I've talked about this, this scenario in the past and I didn't, I wasn't sure if, uh, Ice Spice and her team had the capital to actually pay Nikki's fee in order to get on Princess Diana remix. But Ice Spice here says we was going to pay the fee, right? She says, I think she's jealous that I own all my masters because she said, James, you think you're the man and think you so cool in the interview. She says, I don't know why she mentioned that. I've made reference to this exact interview with Billboard a couple of times. As a matter of fact, I, it would probably do me some service to go ahead and pull it up just so everybody can see it for yourself because I read it, but I didn't show it. So just give me a moment here. So here in the interview with Billboard, they talk about how her manager um started learning about the music business and how it applied towards their negotiation tactics. Right. So it says, while ice adapts to bigger stages, which I made reference to before about how she was getting on stage, doing these festivals, doing all these different things. And she still hasn't learned to put on a great show. We, we just saw her a couple of weeks ago at uh, Coachella still kind of performing the same way, but nonetheless, while she adapts to bigger stages, Roseman, AKA James, is adapting to higher stakes management operations and drawing from old inspirations. Those include one of his college textbooks, All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald Passman. Great book for anybody trying to get into the industry. Or you could check out my book called um, The Paying A Portfolio, Volume 1 and 2. 
Either one. <laughs> um, as Roseman calls it, the Bible of the music business. After dropping out of Bay State College in Boston, he flew to Los Angeles to meet with Passman, a family friend, to get advice that helped him start previous management company Royal Dream Projects in 2012, right? And like Ice, he also learned from his father, James Jimmy Henchman Roseman, the famed hip-hop mogul who formerly managed the game, Gucci Mane, and many more. James says, I was privy to a lot of his deal making and me being a sponge allowed me to soak up what contracts look like and how to approach labels. Before labels began approaching ICE, he advised her, let's do it ourselves first. Deals came to her, production deals, 360 deals, but they were deals that I knew could be better. And in order to get a better deal, you have to go out and do it for yourself. Which is solid advice. Let me make sure this is showing up correctly for y'all. I bet. While Ice's team independently released her first two major singles, Munch and Bikini Bottom. I forgot about Bikini Bottom. Uh, Roseman tapped Create Music Group for distribution after the company partnered with World Star Hip Hop in 2021. Very smart. Create Music Group. Um, they're an independent company out there, and they also have their own uh, credit card that they give to artists, which is basically your advance on a card where you can pay. Uh, for the things that you need and you recoup it in your royalties. So they're a very forward thinking company that's out there um, for independents that have motion. So they launched a full service music distribution hub called World Star Distro. Um, he says, I knew Create Music had sister companies, World Star, Genius, Dat Piff. So my thing was, here's the record, here's the vision. And basically, how do we get our music featured on those different arms within the within the uh, umbrella right so if create music group has world star that's a video platform genius is a platform where you're gonna get you're gonna be able to go in the studio do songs I'm, I'm so tired of these goddamn prompts putting shit on my screen um go in the studio um uh, describe your song you're also gonna get the opportunity to go in the studio meet with the people over at genius um do episodes of their show, interviews, all that good shit, right? That Piff, I mean, that was basically old old school music distribution with mixtapes and whatnot, but they were trying to keep that thing alive for a minute. So you join in with a, with a big company, right? And it's like, we're going to bring this artist who's buzzing or about to buzz, but we need access to the entire infrastructure of everything y'all doing. So whatever y'all got under the umbrella... I want to expose my art, excuse me, I want to expose my artist through all of those mediums. So that's exactly what they did. Here's the record. Here's the vision. From there, Roseman made sure those branches executed the vision. World Star Hip Hop premiered Ice Spice's music videos on YouTube, while Genius had her perform Munch on its open mic series. We was able to be very strategic with it, and it worked. I think that open mic series freestyle was one of the... Uh, Actually, what broke her out there. So to help him and Ice navigate the ensuing label bidding war and emerge with the friendliest possible terms, including owning her masters in publishing, Roseman hired his high school acquaintance, Leon Morabia, an attorney from the newly merged powerhouse from Mark Music and Media Law PC, which they still work with Ice Spice to this day. They represent artists like Billie Eilish and Guns N' Roses. So when he and Ice arrived at a dinner meeting with 10K and Capital at Noble Malibu last summer, they weren't freestyling it. They had a vision walking in and they were very adamant that they wanted certain things, right? Creative control, masters, publishing. So she got a very favorable deal because she was already, you know, moving. I think all of that is very important to detail when we talk about this. All right. Baby Storm comes back. Do with that information what you will. Now, I'll be back in a few hours. I have a music video to drop. Enjoy your morning. So she came through, set the block on fire, and said, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to get this music video ready to drop. She comes back and says, wait, but I thought I was crazy and lying and mental. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, watch who you fuck with because I'm definitely the right one. This is another one of those scenarios where two things can be true at the very same time. Ain't nobody letting your ass off the hook. You're still crazy with some of the shit you're saying. 
But some of this stuff you're saying is also lining up as it pertains to Ice Spice in particular, right? We're going to scroll past some of the bullshit. This person, KND, says, Ice Spice so dumb. Why befriend a girl you used to bully? Um, should have known she had a vendetta against you. This ain't like the movies. Baby Storm says, no, I'm the dumb one for deciding to forgive her and be her friend again. She has always been evil. Evil is is crazy. That's a that's deep. Evil. I just didn't see it. I was a good person for 24 years. That's why no one can expose me. Every after everything ISIS put me through, she left me no choice. She was never a quote unquote best friend. The world deserves to know the truth. That's some fool. That's some fuck shit. Your friendship didn't work out. The world doesn't have to know that. But here you are. People are trying to reason with her. She says, you don't know what she did to me. Well, this is your opportune time to tell us. So here we go. She says, I knew ISIS was evil back in December. OK, so this is very recent December of last year when she, a multimillionaire, told me she gave her siblings two hundred dollars each for Christmas because they suck at school. Uh, you want to put new millionaire there? I think I think it's very key to say new millionaire. If they younger siblings, hey, man, $200 is $200. I don't give a fuck how much I got. Take your two and do what you do. I ain't mad at that. You ain't going to make me hate Ice Spice for that because I already don't like her fucking music. <laughs> she says, meanwhile, ISIS was in special. Oh, no. ISIS was in special ed classes when we were in high school. Wow. I was in advanced. I have been pointing out that this girl be saying poopy on her songs. Woo, shit. So <laughs> she says, then I graduated high school a year early, left all those people behind and started pursuing my music career. Hold on. Let me pull myself over just a little bit. My music career. I stopped being friends with her after Christmas. But when I found out recently she befriended the, the racist white girl who made my childhood a living hell for 15 years, all bets were off. Should have been a better person. Okay. Let's dig into it. So Ice comes through and says, bro, this lady is on IG again. Baby Storm says, your mom? Yes. House out the window because she's a weirdo clout chasing attention whore that cares more about showing off her bought body than getting her kids a house since day one. Damn. Akbar V, I hope you're listening. This is what your kids might be thinking about you, Shouty. <laughs> I ain't got I ain't got nothing but have a chicken sandwich, Shouty. I can't show. What about your kids? She says she'd rather show off her body than get in the house for her kids. She said we would have dead ass grew up in a house if she put all her surgery money on a down payment. Hey, you trying to expose ice. I think you exposing her mama at this point. <laughs> Fucking asshole. And mind you, I forgot to tell you my sisters all never had a job on top of the fact they suck at school. Like they Christmas gifts going to be so underwhelming. Ooh, okay. Well, I don't see, I, I still don't see why this is bad, right? And the reason why I say that is perhaps if they would have been doing better in school, they would have got better gifts. Yeah, 200 on Christmas is a, is a win. I don't know how old her sisters are, but I, I think they're teenagers, 200 is 200. What I'm supposed to give you? Five, ten thousand for Christmas? Fuck out of here. What you gonna do with that? And you ain't doing shit in school? Get your grades up. Do better than me. So I don't feel like this is damning information, particularly. You thought you thought you exposed some evil. She ain't as slow as you think. She preserving that manyan. 
Someone says you're you're going too far. She opened up to you about her family. This is not about the music industry or anything silly anymore. Do you understand how much do you have to trust a person to be comfortable talking about your family with them? She says, yep, says a lot about the friend I was. Karma's a bitch, should have known better. Pro tip, if you're always a good person and you're good to other people, you can never be exposed. I don't see where the expose is coming from, to be honest. At this at this point, you just putting text messages out because you can. Somebody says, what was your final straw with Ice Spice? She says her claiming I was her quote unquote best friend. I never claimed that, by the way. You sure about that? You sure about that pudding? Then becoming best friends with the racist white girl who made my childhood a living hell just to spite me. After she used my connections and resources that I worked so hard for to make her way to the top. Please tell us the resources and connections that you utilize for her. We would love to know since you're telling everything. And try to stop my career from ever flourishing. We would need more details on that too. If you want to talk about evil, get to the real shit. That's the only reason she shouted out Lucy in that song. I'm done talking about her. Truth wins in the end. R.I.P. to that shitty friendship. Now you done. Now that you got folks' attention, now that you got folks wanting to know more, you talking about you done. Man, give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> She say, fun fact, the only other person Riot ever produced for is me. A song called Lover Boy that came out in 2021 when I let them live with me for the free. It was the first song that ever made him any streaming money. Written by me, produced by Riot. Damn. All right, y'all. I think at this point, I don't think y'all in line. This nigga producing music for you. Y'all not even in a real like great position to where 2021. This is before the takeoff. If you was able to get a beat from Riot and nobody really knew who Riot was like that. For the most part. Everybody's coming up together. He produced for you before Ice Spice blew up. This might. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to give you a little bit more credit. But that other shit about them other niggas that you just was firing off at the mouth with, nah. So. Let's see if there's anything further that she's uh, put out. She says, nice try. Confronted ISIS already before I ever posted any screenshots. She knew it was coming. Okay, so she said she let Ice Ice know what it was. She did tell her to count her days. <laughs> but damn. And now she's promoting her music, which we're not gonna give that any play. But you see, she did record. She didn't get she, she didn't get to record the video inside of Target. She went back to another location and found her way to film some shit. She trolling like a motherfucker, man. She need a troll deal. So that's what we got from Baby Storm dishing out on Ice Spice and her tumultuous negotiation with Nicki Minaj. Let me go ahead and readjust my screen. Hey, man, old girl did the dishing, man. I I can't say everything is everything, but shit. Them texts look very valid at this point, especially if she talking about Riot. Riot was producer for her. She said Riot is a good soul. Oh, you ain't going to make me a fan, but you might have made me believe some of this shit you're talking. Damn. Now, on to other scandalous activity. (laughs) Unfortunate. Keisha Cole has been rolling out her relationship with a new boyfriend by the name of Huncho, who's a rapper. But apparently... Memphis rapper Gloss Up, who is also uh, Glorilla's best friend. Y'all saw Gloss Up. She was getting into it with, uh, she jumped in on Akbar V when things got out of hand with JT. Gloss Up decided to come out and expose that this guy, Huncho, is actually sleeping around and, you know, creeping around with her at the same mother effing time. Ain't this about a bit? So, 
Keisha just like within the last couple weeks went public with this young man. They was in the club together. She was all hyped and smiley. That nigga was just looking like, shit, this is what I do, baby. They showing up to events together all of a sudden. Gloss up say, hey, I don't know what's going on over there, but this nigga be over here putting it down. Put the game down, flip it, and reverse it. It's your favorite nipper nap nap. He over here doing all that. He putting the ifa in the nap nap. <laughs> oh my lord. Now I know some of y'all don't know who the fuck Huncho is. So I'm going to have to pull him up with Keisha Cole, let y'all see who the brother is. And then you'll also see him with Gloss Up. So here we are. This is on Complex. And this person says Keisha Cole is 42 and Huncho is 24. All right. So she down there 20 years, his senior. This is the young man here. This is, of course, Keisha Cole. She looked 24, but she damn sure ain't. And this the reverse. All right. And this was as of April 8th. They were seen together. Now, here's where the plot begins to thicken a bit speculation about the two being in a relationship came earlier this month shortly after the two were photographed walking hand in hand in atlanta the image was concerning to some given that the love singer is 42 18 years older than huncho who's 24 which i ain't gonna go too hard on her because we see how men in this industry operate and that shit gets normalized so i'm gonna give her a little pass i'm gonna give her a little pass for a second Unashamed about their relationship, Keisha Cole went to X, a.k.a. Twitter, to confirm the rumors, tagging Huncho's page with a message that read, Mine, in which the Atlanta rapper reposted with a heart emoji. So he didn't even give a full response. That nigga just put a heart on that motherfucker, which people clowned her about, too. Despite the clear age difference, Huncho wouldn't be Cole's first time dating a younger man as she was, excuse me, as she has a child with singer Nico Kale or Kali. 28, who's 14 years younger than her. In 2019, Cole and Kylie had a radio interview with Nick Cannon, who mistakenly called the R&B singer her then-boyfriend's elder, to which she tried to correct him at the 1230 mark. I'm not going to watch that, but damn. Here's the post. Mine, he says, bloop, bloop, heart. Fans started popping up in her mentions. With the stank face, she says, oh, my God, y'all, please don't kill me. She knew she was insecure about this shit from the jump. Damn. Keisha even went so far as to block some of her followers who questioned their relationship, including one who didn't consider Huncho's response to Cole to be affectionate. That was, yeah, nigga used a fake ass heart, they said. Stand the hell up, sister, please. Miss Sidey Poo got blocked by Keisha Cole, but I'm sure Keisha, you know, she put that song out. I should have cheated. Now she looking like I should have listened. <laughs> Damn. Ain't that about it. Y'all know what I'm finna say. So we'll move on from this. So now we got Gloss Up jumping in. It says, my mom taught me to respect elders. I was with him last night and saw you crying, blowing up his phone. Damn. Again, this is Gloss Up, Glorilla's friend. So clearly Glorilla's out here stomping rap bitches and making bail and some shell toes. And Gloss Up is out here having meetings in her bedroom with another woman's rapper nigga. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. So here, somebody's telling Gloss Up, Keisha said you delusional, boo. Gloss Up says, okay, and they gave uh, receipts. Keisha Cole said, the way the shade room running with this fake narrative, like these ain't pics from a video shoot before he met me, is crazy. She continues, him being your sneaky link when you have a man you about to marry, it's nasty work. But I wish you all the best on your project, love. I was actually rooting for the video to come out. Damn. Damn. So Gloss Up got a whole other nigga she finna marry? 
What the fuck going on, man? This guy, uh, Prince Justin, says, why is she so deep into somebody's business to be commenting on who wit and who finna marry? Lady, mind your business. You don't know shit. Gloss up comes and says, my point. So much shit been going on behind the scenes. I haven't said shit. So stop trying to play victim. This is Keisha Cole with what I just said in a bigger format. And these are the photos. You know what it is in real life. Full life stink a link. OK, these photos were posted earlier today and they do look like music video photos. Keisha Cole said, hey, I was I was rooting for this video to come out. But uh, OK, y'all have fun with that. And Gloss Up is trying to make it seem as though they really doing what they doing. Damn. Damn, son, where'd you find that? And this nigga Huncho out here just thinking he motherfucking win. I'm 24. I'm somewhat known in the game. I got these young audience fucking with me. I got the OG Keisha Cole hanging from the... From the <laughs> I got Glitter Girl Gloss. I got Memphis and Atlanta. I got the whole self. He thinking he doing something. Damn, man. It's fucked up, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. So there's that situation. Keisha Cole basically bowed out and said, I'm wishing all y'all the best. And I think that was probably the best move for her to do because who wants to be 42 dealing with all this shit? But you went and got you a young ass nigga. That's where you messed up, man. These young boys, they gonna turn you out and turn you loose. Just going to let you know what they're going to do to you. You might think you're more advanced. You done been through some shit. You done seen some shit. You ain't finna let no nigga take you running you up through there. Nigga finna run you up through there. Y'all seen he had them motherfucking running shoes on. Anyway, uh, we'll move forward and get into uh, Miss Scissor. All right. Now, as I stated to y'all before, SZA hates being labeled as R&B. It's an interesting conversation, but she feels valid in how she feels. You know? Um, with a, in a recent interview, man, let me make sure we're filming. Yeah. In a recent interview uh, with Dazed Magazine, SZA says, the only reason I'm defined as an R&B artist is because I'm black. It's almost a little reductive because it doesn't allow space to be anything or anything else or try anything else. Justin Bieber is not considered an R&B artist. He is a pop artist who makes R&B, folk music or whatever his heart desires. I simply just want to be allowed the same opportunity to make whatever I want without a label, without it being based on the color of my skin or the crew that I run with or the beats that I choose. I want F2F to be seen as what it is. I want nobody gets me to be seen as what it is. I want Kill Bill to be seen as what it is. At the same time, it's nothing to get bent out of shape about because it's just how people are processing you. As long as I don't process myself that way, I don't necessarily box myself into anything. I'm just trying to make music, trying to vibe out and enjoy the experience. Now, when I first heard about this and I didn't get the additional context, the additional pieces of the interview, just seeing that she doesn't like being labeled as R&B, isolated. I was like, Sizzle, man, what the fuck you got going on? We got to stop. We got to cut the bullshit here. I still kind of feel that way, but I can't fully feel that way if we're supporting Beyonce and what she's doing with tackling other genres. But I think the approach is much different. Right? What Beyonce does is she commands her space. She doesn't ask for it. And I think SZA might do well to command her space by making a folk music or a folk song on your album, making whatever style of music you want to make and it be what it is, right? Just because you're identified as R&B doesn't mean that you're a lesser artist. R&B is a style of music created by our people 
The only thing that I can really get behind is I remember years ago, Tyrese was petitioning and I know he's a pretty bad messenger, but he was petitioning for people to support R&B on a much more grander scale because he felt like R&B was becoming a dead genre. He also said that R&B artists get pigeonholed out of accolades. They don't really get awards at the Grammys. Um, their music only gets played either in concert with, and when I say concert, I'm just saying in, in you know, not necessarily on stage, but in tandem with hip hop artists or to get played on the urban AC um, stations, which is typically aimed at an older demographic. And he was like, but R&B is young and fly too, but they don't necessarily want to give us our own shit. What about an R&B station that plays young fly R&B shit, right? What about us being able to excel to the pop charts? If the music is performing, why is it not getting submitted to a larger category? All of those things were very valid. So from that vantage point, I understand where SZA is coming from, but... She's breaking through all of the ceilings that are being imposed on R&B. So the, the issue of the field doesn't even apply to her. She's been on the charts for a year straight with like four, five different records. You've excelled way beyond what other motherfuckers in R&B are doing. So I feel like I understand where she's coming from, but. You're fighting a fight that you ain't even got to square up for. So fans began to question her, right? So somebody says, I'm curious, what other category would she be assigned to? Serious question. Um, she says, if you know, you know. If you don't, that's okay, too. I'm just here for the vibes. So she actually answers the person and says, I just want to be free to create anything. You can look at songs like Julia, F2F, Drew Barrymore, Prom, Nobody Gets Me, Kill Bill, excuse me, Kill Bill, Ghost in the Machine, um, Hijack, Green Mile, Shattered Ring, Omega, and my entire first two projects before Z. None of those are R&B. Whoever connects to the music connects. It's okay to be more than one thing. It's also okay if all you know from me is The weekend and Snooze. I'm grateful regardless. Call it whatever you want. Well, I think you are an R&B artist. They've created an entire different genre for artists such as yourself that do a little bit more experimental music. They put you in the alternative R&B category, but you still have been killing it on the charts, the billboard. So again, I could see if being an R&B artist was holding you back, but you you didn't get held back from getting nominated and taking home Grammys. I'm sure you wanted the pop Grammys, but you 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 fucking killed it. You're killing it. Um, your voice is is uh R&B for the most part. When we think of pop, or at least when I think of pop artists, I don't think of the greatest singers walking the earth. Not to say that SZA is that, but I'm just saying she has, she kills it vocally. She's a fucking, she's amazing at what she does. The enunciation isn't always there, but she's, she's killing the vibes. So I don't think there's no shame in being called an R&B artist. When I look at artists like Usher, Usher is a quintessential R&B artist that excelled to the highest level and he's not out here arguing about what category he's supposed to be in. He's just Usher. I think SZA has the same ability to where she could just be SZA and she can venture into pop, R&B, folk, hip hop, whatever the fuck she wants to do based on the day. And she's going to excel. She's going to shoot up. She's got the fan base. She's got the love. She's got the fan favors. So it's not going to matter. Again, a fight that you don't even got to square up for. So, although I understand the mentality, I don't think it's necessary to fight this battle. Not for you, anyway. You want to fight for others coming up after you? 
That's a conversation, but we don't hear you taking that mold. We don't hear you taking up that mantle. Just my two cents on it, though. Um, I guess we could go ahead and get into Megan. I kept Megan for last because we just don't have enough details to really put her in like the forefront of the story just yet. They're being very, uh, you know, they're just like spoon feeding a little at a time. So Megan took to Instagram to show us all these PlayStation 2 themed covers. MT Stallion Boa, right? So the curse, Boa, the curse of the serpent woman. We've got a collection of six different looks here. I'm guessing this is the album, right? But. Some people are looking at her like you pulling from Chun-Li inspiration. I don't know about all that. Um, actually looks more Mortal Kombat in inspired if I had to look at it. That one in the corner looks like the crow or the matrix in the writing. But um, whatever. Right. I don't think these are games at all. I think this is album promo. Boa, Curse of the Serpent Woman. Hot Girl Productions. But what I think is interesting is one, two, three looks here. Are these the three different... Um, are these the three different characters or three different versions of the album? It's the same outfit, so that's definitely one character. But it's interesting. I see people talking about Boa Hancock from One Piece. You know, she's in her anime girl phase and she's not hiding it. So she's being very transparent about how all of this music is. And her visuals are being inspired by her affinity for anime. But um, I just want the music, man. This is dope. This is cool. This is fire. She's pulling off the looks, too. You know what I mean? But me personally, give me the motherfucking music, man. I need the bops. All this, you know, I'm just a different type of nigga, man. Give me the music. So we don't have a date on when this Boa thing, I'm guessing Boa Curse of the uh, Serpent Child, which sounds like a fucking Kung Fu movie for real, for real. Um, <laughs> five Deadly Venoms. Ah, damn you. Give me back my bread. <laughs> Stupid kid. You'll never be able to match up to my power fist. You know what I mean? Them niggas was wilding back in the days. That's what it sounded like to me. Boa, Curse of the Serpent Child. <laughs> I used to watch them motherfuckers religiously. I might put on some of them shits tonight while I think about it. But shout out to Megan. I'm ready for a release date. I'm ready for new music. I'm ready for all the shits. I'm ready for new motherfuckers to catch some strays. You want to go at Nikki again? Be my guest. You want to go at JT? Be my guest. You got some other motherfuckers in the industry that you want to shoot at because you didn't feel like you got them all off on his? Be my motherfucking guest. You got bobs for the club? Be my guest. You know what I'm saying? You want to shoot at Lil Debbie for, <laughs> you know what I mean? Whoever you want to go at, whatever the problem is, whatever the case may be, just give us the music. You finna tour this shit. Motherfuckers want to learn these lyrics before they show up to the show. Get the people what they need. All right? <laughs> That's my show, man. We've been on for about an hour. It's been fun. Be sure to like and share this video. Tell a friend to tell a friend to come join the channel over here. Become an insider. Much love and respect to everybody that's contributed to the channel. Everybody that subscribed to the channel. We're on our way to that 12K. Definitely trying to get to that 15 and to that 20. That is the ultimate goal at this moment. That's the benchmark. We're hitting little benchmarks. You know, I would like to end this year out somewhere towards, you know, if we can get to 25, 30K, that'll be a win for me. If we can exceed that, that's going to be even more major. But that's what we're looking at, man. So be sure to, you know, 
Like and share. I know some of y'all may not be big on social media like that, but share it to, to your Facebook wall. Just, you know what I mean? Even if you don't use that motherfucker. Share it to Twitter if you got one. If you're a fellow YouTube creator, you know, you might not want to put up nothing that's competing with your content. I get that. Text it to a motherfucker, man. DM a nigga. Say, hey, man, check this nigga out, man. That nigga, that nigga be talking. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, I appreciate it. Much love and respect. I will catch y'all. Y'all know I'm coming back this weekend with even more content. We not laying off. And hopefully we get a response from Drake. You know, Kendrick just dropped his new record earlier in the day, uh, 616 in uh, L.A. I want to know what Drake's got up his sleeve, what he's going to come back and say. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all are expecting. And I will catch y'all soon. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm out. Much love and respect y'all. Peace. King of my city in cul de sac. Coming, I swing like soldier rags. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they doubted me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my I came back with some battery, stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.